Hi guys, in this photo editing tutorial, I'm gonna share with you my favorite Photoshop and Lightroom plugin, and I'm gonna show you how I'm using it to quickly edit and improve my photos. We're gonna take a look at how I've edited this photo into this using a really simple and easy to use editing program. If you think that this would be a really useful plugin for yourself or even using it as a standalone photo editor, Stay with me in this video because I've got a discount code that you're welcome to use. So what is this photo editing plugin and why do I love it so much? It's Luminar, it's currently in its fourth generation and I've been using it since Luminar 3 and I've really enjoyed watching the program grow and develop. It's a great tool for beginner photographers, but also people wanting to grow into something more advanced. So the software has within it the power to grow with you. A lot of the features within the program are actually AI driven. And that's really great because it enables you to still have creative control over the vision and where your photo is actually headed. But the software is doing a lot of the heavy lifting for you, which is great. I'm using Luminar 4 in this instance purely as a plugin, but it has so much more power beneath the surface. But hopefully through this video, you'll get a good sense of that. It really is a powerful and valuable asset, whether you're a beginner photographer looking to edit your photos or an advanced user. So let's dive in, take a look. Okay, we're inside Photoshop and we've got our photo. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just drag the background layer to a new layer. This is our copy and we're gonna call this Luminar Edit. And from here, let's just come up to Filter, select Skylum Software and Luminar 4. So Luminar will load the photo and any adjustments we make here are gonna be applied to that layer that we just created. And just a quick walkthrough of Luminar 4 and how it's set up. We've basically got an Essentials tab here, which we're in at the moment. We've got a Creative tab. Portrait, if that's your game, is Portraiture. There's heaps of tools here that we won't be looking at. And the Pro section as well. But just for this example, we're going to be sticking with Essentials and Creative. So the first thing I'd like to dive into um, normally would be light because this gives us access to your basic raw editor as it were. And this is why as a standalone program, it's still fantastic because you've got all of the functionality that you'd have with Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw um, with the addition of all these extra AI tools. So the first one we're gonna deal with is AI Accent. And as you can see, as we bring this up, it's doing heaps to the image. It's basically looking at the contrast, the color, and it's making adjustments on what it thinks is the best thing to do. Usually I find 100 in any of these tools is far too much, but at least you can see the direction that you're headed. So then you can just ease off that particular filter. AI structure is similar to clarity in a way, but it's a much more intelligent edit that you're able to do. If we push that to 100, we can really see that it's bringing out a bit of life in the mountains here, more detail through the leaves. And for this photo, I quite like that. I mean, we don't, again, want to use too much of it, but I do like that. If we decided that we wanted to desaturate the blue or enhance the oranges somehow, we could do that here, not through just the, grabbing the vibrance or the saturation. What we'd do is come into advanced settings and we can speak directly into say the oranges and let's say you wanted to make them more yellowy green, for example, or um, even the reds push those towards more of an orange color rather than that reddy color. That's totally up to you. But in this instance, what I might do is just actually desaturate the blue ever so slightly so that our eye sticks more with the orange and that just pops out just a little bit more. So we've still got the complementary of the blue and orange colors working together, but the blue just isn't so in your face. We've just eased that back ever so slightly. The black and white conversion and details enhancer, great tools, but I'm not gonna to be touching them in this one. But here I might just have a little look at the dehaze tool. Um, I like the dehaze tool, but often it will just throw in a little bit of a color cast. You can see where I'm pushing that all the way to 100, that cloud's turning quite yellow. So I'm not in love with that, but I do like a little bit more punch that it is adding. So if we just ease that in at 22, let's say happy with that. Vignette we can also add, so we can either brighten the edges or the inverse of that and go darker edges. I prefer darker edges. Um, and what I'd like to do is push it all the way 
to a minus 100 and we can see what we're doing and now we can actually just finesse that just a little bit we might want to feather it so it's a softer transition towards the middle looks much more natural and once we're happy with the look of the vignette what we can do is then just ease that amount off and say yep somewhere ooh, maybe there if you want to just see a before and after you can use this toggle switch here before and after adding that particular tool. If you want to see a before and after of where you've come from right from the start, I love this, click this eye tool here, before, let go, after, before and after, or you can use this sliding tool, which is also very cool as well. So that's a really great way to see your progress and turn those off just to see how we're editing now. So let's now progress the photo edit a little further and jump into the creative tab. There are some really powerful tools within the AI Sky replacement and Augmented Sky. Here, I'm not going to touch them because I kind of like this floaty cloud here. Sun rays is extremely useful when you do have a sun in your image and you want to create a little bit more interest in there, but I'm not going to touch that either. For this one, we're going to come to dramatic and I'm going to try pushing that up. Now you can see it gets a little bit more contrasty, but desaturated. Now, I quite like the way that's heading if we just use a little bit of that. Mystical is fantastic if you're wanting to create a more dreamy look to your image. So again, let me push that to 100. And for some landscapes, that looks great. You know, on waterfalls, on beach scenes, things like that looks fantastic. Here, 100%, again, far too much. But so let's just work that around that kind of 25, something like that, happy with that. Color styles is also stupidly good, stupidly useful because you've got access to your LUTs and that is a lookup table. Um, you may be familiar with those, um, but basically it creates a look by remapping your colors to something that you might prefer for your particular image. It's not doing a whole heap here because we're basically duotone. We've only got two colors that we're working with anyway, the blue and the orange. But what I may do is just go to red trace. I quite, I quite like the way that is kind of, again, desaturating the background and bringing our eye more to the tree. But I'm just going to ease it off just a little bit. 100% see exactly what it's doing to the image. 0% none of it. Let's just ease that in. Sit that around 23. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Now the last tool that I'm going to use for this particular example is going to be adding a layer of fog. So what I'm going to do is just come to light fog. And now as I bring this up, you're going to freak out because it's basically going to bleach out the image and you're going to think, well, that doesn't look very realistic at all, but that's okay. Because in this one, we're just going to use a little mask just to put this fog where we want it to be. And I feel like it, could just be sitting along the horizon here as if the lake is just a little bit misty morning. This was actually shot during the middle of the day, not the optimum time to be there, but you imagine this was shot in the morning. We might have a little bit of mist coming off of the lake here as the sun's warming it up. So let's use our edit mask feature here, grab a brush. And what we're going to do is just paint it in where we want it. So let's keep the opacity at 50. And if we want to change the brush size, we can use the bracket keys, just like in Photoshop. And we click and we start painting and we can just paint in a layer of fog. So I'm just going to do that along the horizon line, decrease my brush size a little bit as I go over it. Now what I'm also doing is going over a little bit more here over this mountain that's further back, because what that's going to do is basically create a greater sense of depth that is known as atmospheric perspective. Um, and it's a nice, neat, useful tool to give your image a sense of depth more than it had during the camera's actual capture. So let's just look at a before and after with our fog. Let's turn or toggle this here. That's off, that's on, off and on. Again, it might just be a little bit strong. Let's ease it off a little bit. Let's go somewhere around that 34 mark. And what I want to share with you now is what I really, really like in Luminar 4.1 and beyond. It wasn't present in Luminar 4 and I really felt they were missing a trick. And that is the percentage slider. So 
If we come to layers here, you can see we've now got access to the amount and we can actually ease that off and that will take us all the way to our before. 100% is our after. And you can see that it's easy to actually overcook the image because you're layering one tool over another tool over another and quickly those effects can accumulate and the image can sort of run away on you a little bit. Um, but just having this amount slider, I love it. Particularly if you're using this as a standalone photo editing software, you can actually really utilize that tool. I mean, in Photoshop, potentially we could just bring the opacity of this layer down. Um, but I like being able to do this in Luminar and say something like that, 61%, 62%, happy with that. We're just gonna click apply and this will reopen in Photoshop. So while that's exporting my image, I'm just gonna quickly point out that along the bottom here, you've got some presets that are just all down there and they're looks that I have actually created for mostly dealing with architecture. Um, it's all alphabetically arranged at the moment. Um, and they've been so useful to me just finishing off my architectural photography. And here we are with our Luminar edit now opened in Photoshop. So we can look at our before, and our after, and I just feel looking at the before, the blues were just a little bit too strong, too vibrant, and there wasn't as much interest in the image. Whereas in our after, I think we've just taken that to the next level. Well, I was pretty pleased with the results and I was able to achieve those really quickly. You can push your photo really far and take it to the extremes if you want, or you can keep your edit quite subtle. It really is up to you. And the fact that you can control the amount with which the effect is applied, I think is just absolutely brilliant. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Um, due to the unfortunate situation we've got globally at the moment, I'm in lockdown at the moment in New Zealand, um, but I'm going to be using this time to actually get into some of my photo editing that I never really get around to do, and I'm going to be using Luminar as a big component within that editing process. So if you want to join me with that, there's a link in the description, and you are more than welcome to use the discount code at Sky10 to get yourself a copy. Thanks for watching. Stay well, and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers, guys.